I want to start with the game slash thought experiment. Let's imagine the year is 2075. I'm living on this space habitat and I'm hiring you as my oracle slash consultant to help me visualize this picture. You're someone who's thought deeply about living on space or living in space or living on space habitats. So I'm going to list down one category at a time of things I can do in space. I would love to get your thoughts on what that might look like, how that might be different as compared to what. Are you ready? Yeah. Great. Too late to back out. Okay. First, let's start with the daily routine. Let's assume I've just woken up on a space habitat. What would my daily routine look like? Just the small chores like brushing, showering, cooking, cleaning. How does that change on space if it changes at all? Right now, the way we live in space is very structured. It's very schedule based. Um, it's kind of an orchestrated dance with your other crew members. So, you know, if someone's in um, using, you know, the hygiene area or someone else is using the exercise equipment, you have to work around their schedule. Um, and so 50 years from now, um, hopefully we are living in slightly bigger locations in space. So there might be more opportunity for you to work out in tandem, maybe with a crewmate. Um, there definitely is still that need to, to exercise, usually around two hours a day. Um, a lot of that is to mitigate the effects of microgravity. And so that looks like uh, strength training and aerobic training um, to combat some of the heart deconditioning, some of the bone loss and muscle atrophy. Um, so generally wake up would probably look like you, know, you wake up, you brush your teeth, yeah. you get your gym clothes on, you go to the treadmill and you strap yourself down on the treadmill because you need bungees and you uh, maybe run for a bit, maybe you cycle for a bit, listen to some music, um, maybe you do some strength training, um, change clothes, do your hygiene. Um, They've tried showers in space. Astronauts have actually found that showers are usually more trouble than they're worth. And really? so, yeah, Skylab <laughs> okay. had a shower um, and it was a it was a process. It was a whole thing. <laughs> so um, it probably will look closer to a sponge bath potentially. But remember, you're not necessarily sweating as much because it's just not as much work to be done against gravity. Um, and so that's kind of the the big chore of the day is really keeping your body body fit. Um, once that's done, you're probably taking breakfast with your crewmates. Um, social Social gatherings, especially around um, kind of makeshift tables and makeshift breaking bread in space is really, um, really, really important. And that's yeah. not really going to change in 50 years. Like having, you know, a multicultural chance for a crew, probably an international crew to sit down um, and eat around a table is really important. Um, breakfast is a little bit maybe more flexible because people are off doing their things immediately right after. So maybe you're passing crewmates in the galley. Um, saying hi, you're maybe checking the news on your tablet. So yeah. thinking about, you know, what's what's cracking down on Earth. Um, <laughs> maybe you're looking at correspondences from your family. Um, you know, our communication systems are only getting better with with um, space habitats. And so being able to maybe video call or voice call your family um, would be an opportunity for that. Um, and then you start your day. And so the day is probably anywhere from eight to 10 hours. If it's a science mission, you're doing uh, blocks of different science um, Right now, the way astronauts do their work is that it's structured depending on, you know, a myriad of different different experiments, um, either NASA based or other payloads that are flying from different companies. Yeah. Um, and that's probably going to be very similar. Um, and so maybe they're testing out a new um, centrifuge for artificial gravity. And so they'll spend some time in the centrifuge trying to uh, read or do other activities while being spun around, or they'll be doing kind of a cutting edge biotechnology experiment. Um, they might be growing crystals in space. They might be doing uh, research for to cure like a new rare blood cancer or something like that. That's another big application. Um, and so that will be most of your day <laughs> with some time for lunch. Um, and right now the way, you know, a lot of the free time is structured is that it's really fighting against uh, maintenance blocks. Um, there's a lot of maintenance that happens on, sta on the space station, the ISS. Um, and so that's usually one to usually two hours a day uh, per astronaut, which is a lot. Um, it's often the uh, life support systems break. Um, the toilet breaks a lot. <laughs> so you have these sort of high critical, high criticality uh, systems that you need to fix. And so <laughs> the aim in the future is that these systems aren't breaking as much. Yeah. Um, or we have maybe enough of a crew size where you have folks that are really there who are specialized. And so you have people who are there um, as a maintenance crew on rotation um, and, you know, Aurelia likes to envision this sort of like technology research stations where you'd have people who are there for doing science in the lab, but then you have folks who are also rotating through as commercial um, spaceflight participants, people who are there on leisure. So their day is going to look a lot different. Maybe they're doing photography, maybe they're doing art. Um, they're doing a lot of the 
really highly inspirational activities that astronauts love to do in their free time. Yeah. But right now, career astronauts are really busy with their um, all those you know things breaking, their science, um, and so they get the chance to do that as they're like weak in space, right? You mentioned so many interesting things, and I want to go to each of them one yeah. by one. Let's start with the food. Obviously, I'm going to be most interested in that. So what are the different options for food that I have? Breakfast, you spoke about breakfast. Um, what are some of the most common dishes that we would expect in space and something that you just can't dream of? Yeah, I think, you know, through through really diligent efforts from different space agencies, um, basically every cuisine has been attempted in space. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, chatter on the space station about, you know, okay, the Europeans have the best food. And so, <laughs> like, I'll trade for, yeah. the, you know, Italian caviar or whatever they have, right? Yeah. Um, and so food has gotten better, uh, mostly because that's a huge psychological thing, right, is having, you know, pretty bad food for months on end. Um, and so I think in the future, we'll see more and more food produced in situ, so grown in space. Um, that way you can get more reliable, fresh produce. Um, flavor is a big thing. So when you're exposed to microgravity for a long period of time, um, the fluid shift often leads astronauts to be a little bit congested. And so they'll lose their sense of taste a little bit um, for the first really in, kind of indefinitely. Um, and wow. so spice is really big because spice yeah. is something that you can still taste. Um, and so like sriracha is basically gold up there, <laughs> like hot peppers, <laughs> mustard greens, things that are a little bit bitter. Um, so we'll see more and more of, uh, I think, those types of things grown in situ also. And then let's say I've done all my daily chores, the maintenance work, and I'm looking for a break. What are my options in terms of recreation, entertainment, leisure? What could I do on a space habitat? Yeah, so right now, the biggest thing is the window. Just go to the window and look out. Um, and I think that's not really likely to change too much um, because mm -hmm. the whole point is that you're experiencing space and our, our planet from above, right? And so more, you know, I think having more opportunities for that, more windows or... Uh, the chance to go and sit by the window to do photography, yeah. um, to kind of pursue your artistic hobbies in space, I think is important. A lot of astronauts also bring right now like their musical instruments. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really beautiful is like seeing astronaut Katie Coleman play the flute in space is really cool. Um, so I think well, that's likely to be the same.